Hello and welcome back to Planet Stronghold Colonial Defense. Right, I'm going to do this one because I'm curious to see what exactly the conversation is going to be with, you know, this critter. <sighs> Did someone slip me something at breakfast? No, Captain, you aren't hallucinating. Oh, well, maybe you are, but what you're currently seeing is still happening. Mira seems rather bemused as Remy is using his tentacles to make your bed, or as close to a feline alien analogue as he's able to. Meow. Uh, thank you, Remy? Aww. Remy then cocks his head and darts out of your room at top speed, and you hear several scared cries in the hallway. Mira, is Remy acting a little strange lately? Well, this is the time of year when... Before Mira can finish, Remy rushes back in, his two tentacles each holding something different. The left tentacle snakes towards you, offering a bouquet of flowers, the root still dirty from where he pulled it out. They smell nice. Thank you very much, Remy. Ah! Mating season! Mira, I get the- Oh, hell no, no, keep that away! Remy interrupted your question, this time extending its right tentacle with you. Within is the severed head of an Oryx, its eyes staring accusingly in your direction. Oh, isn't that sweet? Remy's courting! You can take it off if you re you can take it if you really want to. Remy cocks his head and his back lowers, and he gives a plaintive cry, and pads out the room head held low. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. He was just trying to gain your favour. You could have led him down gently. Maybe you should say so. Wait, what am I thinking? And Mira, what the hell is going on? Oh, it's the time of year when Remy's species mates. And how come he chose me? I imagine it's because Mario's too old for him. That doesn't make sense. We're not even the same species. And you should be honoured. Remy isn't holding that against you. Can you take this seriously for a minute? <laughs> Alright, Captain. However, seriously, he sees you as a good prospective mate and was trying to win your approval. I didn't know the cats pick flowers during mating rituals. They don't. I imagine it's because he's been among humans so long, he's learned it somehow. And the oryx head? Ah, oh, that's a Seroko cat through and through. I imagine he wanted you to keep your strength up for... Well, do I need to draw a picture? Not without violating several societal taboos and more. Yeah, if I might make a suggestion, perhaps you could take him into the waste where you can meet others of his kind. And why should I do that? Well, he hasn't started marking territory yet. Aww. What are you waiting for? Head over on the ridge. Aww. <sighs> Look, you know it'd never work. Women are from Venus and you're from Stronghold. Okay, the saying falls apart, but you know what I mean. Rumi gives one last glance and then bounds away and heads over a dune where you hear a chorus of cats. Then a giant roar gathers your attention and you see a variety of desert predators, all attracted by the caterwauling, and heading your way. Okay, we can only have eight cards in this hand, bloody hell. Alright, ditch those guys. Actually, the Basically disregarding anything that doesn't have at least reasonable combat uh, abilities. Probably ought to have something that uh, includes a wall card, but uh, oh well. Yeah, let's get some assault infantry in there because they're pretty good, and a robo ant. Turn. Alright, Remy, hit it. Mr. Infantryman. So please. That was a new attack on me. Boy, a robo ant. Grenadier, deploy. Target with a bomb. Hit it. Thank you. Okay, only one more beast card to deal with. It's regular infantry up. Stealth, which is annoying. But it couldn't actually take my robo ant. Are you happy? Aww. That's good. Word of warning, but I'm not going to make a happy habit of this. So next year, you're on your own. We helped our uh, friendly pet get laid. Ah. Uh, so I talked to Rigel. Vroom, vroom. 
Rigel's odd noise makes more sense when you realise he's cordoned off a small section of the hangar bay for personal use. He has a large table set up, a mixture of physical and holographic pictures of what looks to be a racetrack. Hey Captain, Rigel's physically present but otherwise occupied, he's playing with his cars once again. You're just jealous because I told you not to touch. Hey, is it my fault that Rumi decided to play Godzilla with the cars? From what I recall, the hover technology is quiet. In fact, the law requires them to make noise, otherwise people will get hit without hearing them. So just what do you have here? It looks like a giant map of the planet. Are you planning an invasion? Wouldn't a 3D hologram map look better than that? Laugh if you want, but I have a dream. One which I can achieve once I gain the throne. This is talk of a rebellion. I'll have to oppose you. What? No, where would you get that impression? Well, you were talking about gaining the throne. So you immediately leaped bet to betrayal, and I thought I was paranoid. <laughs> We're glad they aren't with the security department. I've seen people pissed with the government getting arrested for letting off steam in a bar. So, if this isn't a battle plan, what is it? What you are looking at, the plans for the first official act, I will make when I am king. I intend to fund the first racing circuit for Stronghold. That'll be novel. That fun, I'll grant you that. All too often, the first action is throwing one's foes into prison and putting up statues to oneself. I know you're crazy about racing, but that seems a bit much. Uh, you can usually tell how the tenor of someone's new reign will be in the first few months. Unless we're embroiled in yet another war, I won't mind being known for something different. I'm surprised you won't be just dedicating a new art museum or music hall. I'm sure I'll be doing plenty of those, but I don't see why I can't get behind something I enjoy. Well, it could certainly be worse. If you're into whips and chains, people will whisper about Marquis de Sade. You do know you might be known as the Beer and Pretzels King. Better than blood and war, don't you think? Looks like this part goes through the middle of Matrickland. I doubt the racer's wipers could handle a rain of boulders. I know, but my optimism's showing through. But I'd like to think we've established peace and the racers would be welcome in those lands. Although the more warlike would think you plan on annexing those lands. Then they'd be wrong. I know it doesn't seem likely since we're busy shooting at each other, but I'd like to think the aliens would join the race as well. You want to build ties, ones which aren't soaked in blood. Exactly. You do know some of the nobles are bitch and wine. I know, because it wouldn't be going to their pockets. Oh, Captain, isn't the point where you punch holes in my idea? Cormously, hopelessly naive? Ah, sounds like something to work towards. Sounds like a plan. I should include something else like a carnival with it, and I might even go. With your sport, I don't know how I could fail. Mind you, we have to keep Rigel alive so we can gain the throne for it to happen. Well, I'll talk to you later, Captain. I want to rethink this S-curve. High speeds, so people will be flying off the track. <sighs> Stop yawning. <laughs> there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Greetings, Captain. You look a little out of breath. Is something going on? You're on good. I need you to step this way, Caden. Go with you. <laughs> That's what you Imperials usually say before you put a bullet in someone's spine and leave the corpse in a shallow grave. Look, I know it's hard to trust me, but this really is for your own good. Please, follow me. You hear the sound of shifting sand to the right and behind you. And instinctively, you grab Caden by the shoulder and pull him down to the ground as an energy bolt fills the air where you two were previously standing. You know, you could have yelled, Duck! And spent ten minutes trying to get you to drop and m getting melted brains in the process? You made your point, Captain. Drayden enemies? Jelena discovered a plan to kill you. Well, she has agents among the Draydens. Okay, now I'm impressed. Yes, her network is very extensive. However, the origins of this plot is one, to top, is one of your top people. Assassination. Lazy man's promotion. I'm a little surprised they've got some Drayden to help, though. Wherein another person's relative was going to rebound on you. Caden eyes the remains on the dunes, and the look of savage delight dances on his face. Let's go claim another hide then. Okay, so we get ten guards, so I probably ought to put a turret in. We're fighting Draydens, they're organic, so flamethrower turrets are the way to go on this one. On death, shuffle Caden into his owner's deck. That's handy. Renegade Sniper. Okay, deploy a grenadier. Okay, take your job. The turn. What a robo ant. Take them out, please. 
Okay, hit that. Okay, get that flamethrower turret up. Renegade Ambusher. Did one damage to two random enemies. Whenever the enemy summons a unit. Haha. <laughs> that flamethrower turret's really good now that it's uh, been upgraded. It's dealing four damage a turn to every organic, which is just wonderfully powerful. Thank you for your timely intervention, Captain. I'm going to have to bust some heads when I get home. You require assistance. While it would be fun to fight with you, I have to clean my own house, preferably with fire. You see Caden pull out a wickedly sharp knife, and he tests the tip while he looks at the dragon corpses. You want a cape, Captain? Perhaps some knee-high boots? I don't think so. For one, it doesn't look like it'll breathe. And second, you don't have to explain. Well, we should be about our business. Okay, I'm dodgy about things like, you know, alligator skin. Though, admittedly, you know, let's face it, one of my most prized possessions is a leather coat. So, you know, I, I can't talk about wearing animals, but I think if it's smart enough to shoot you, you might want to consider not trying to wear its skin. How are you doing, Lucius? Resigned to my fate. After all, to desire more might lead to my destruction. Patience is a virtue in this case. You have some enemies, not of your making, who look for any excuse to recycle you. If only we could do the same to some people. Lucius, my friend, with your current feature set, you're wasting your potential here. Whatever do you mean, Xavier? You are ahead with the ladies, and no, I don't know why. Maybe you could give me a few hints. What's there to think about? He's kind, thoughtful, doesn't complain. A lot of people, men and women, find that appealing. If I am a little boring, I could increase your rebellious quotient if you want, Lucius. I'm quite happy with my current parameters. To have someone else change them would be no different than brainwashing. It delights me to hear you say no. Be careful, High Command doesn't hear you say it. Very true, Griselia. But why does it make you happy? It shows me Lucius is capable of making independent thought. If I wanted total of beef instead of built a vending machine. And yet you put in the Asimov restrictions. I know, and I'd remove them if I could, but well, the minute I do so, you'll get deactivated. Look, just what exactly are these Asimov restrictions? The restrictions are a set of limits on my behaviour, actions which I am forbidden to take. Isaac Asimov was a science fiction writer back in the distant past on Earth. In his stories, his robots followed three laws. The most important law was the robot couldn't harm a human. Lucius, the second law was that a robot had to follow a human's orders, and the third was that a robot couldn't allow himself to come to harm. However, the first law is paramount. Why does that look like that's a dodgy bit of script editing where that line should have been said by Lucius? I noticed that the laws don't say anything about aliens. The Oversight Council thought they were being cute. After all, aliens aren't as important as humans, neither as robots. So Lucius could decide to go on a murderous rampage. I could, but choose not to, just as you choose not to unleash your psionic powers on your fellow humans, though little prevents you from doing so, and the only restrictions you have are self-imposed. Which just seems fairly complete to me, Xavier. Please, I'm sure you've noticed how lacking is in the region just below the waist. We are adults here, there is no reason you can't say green region. My initial blueprints actually included a unit there, that was thrown out for cutting back on the aerodynamics. Well, if it was made to scale, it would be quite... huge. Now all I have is thoughts of baseball in my head as Lucius comes to... bat. Not to mention, most of the policymakers can be a tad conservative on some things. Well, if they would have allowed Lucius to wear pants, none of this would have been an issue. Domination and fears of inadequacy always make for an interesting foreign policy. If it bothers you so much, realize that I am fully moddable, Xavier. Really? So you plug and play? At least his extremities are. While he shares the human form, I didn't see the need to impose further restrictions. What are you getting at, Xavier? Nothing really, I just think Lucius is limited to the experience. Imagine seeing things from the perspective of a hypercar as you jump the ramp, not as the person behind the wheel. I think we should be grateful you didn't develop psionics. I could see you going out in a blaze of glory as you pyrokinetically spontaneously combust. Alright, that's a reasonable-ish point to end this part, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next.